Aloha, friends and family. It is time. It's time to do an update on the old sex link coral glow banana gene thingy that occurs in ball pythons. If you don't know, coral glow and banana are basically just different lines of the same morph. And you guys asked for it, so you're gonna get it. We did one of these already, but we didn't really go over the super thing. Or maybe we did, but I, I don't really remember if we did or not, so we're gonna do it now anyway. The last video I did on this on this topic can be found in the card right here. Click on it, watch it, like it, love it. It's good for you. Really quickly before we get into that mess, I wanna to talk to you guys about one something very important. Uh, I've noticed lately that a lot of YouTube seems to be so much about selling things. Everybody is trying to sell something, whether it's a product, whether it's a service, some random bullshit, or even, even the idea that you are someone who you say you are not. I just wanted to say that for those of you that watch this channel regularly, you know that I would never stoop to such a level as to just try and sell you things. I'm here to make your life better by being the most real version of myself I can be, more real even than anything you've ever seen on a computer screen before. And if you don't believe me, go down in the link down in the description where you can find all kinds of awesome Triple B gear, whether it's beanies, hoodies, shirts, t-shirts, all kinds of fun stuff, hats. And uh, yeah, you can, you can prove me wrong. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, here's this beautiful little Super Coral Glow 100% Het Pied male. 100% Het Pied means that you can breed them to a female that is either Het Pied or Visual Pied and get a Visual Pied baby. Uh, this guy is available and the whole real point of this video is actually so I can sell them to one of you guys without having to list them on Morph Market. But I would, I would never do that. Okay, so how do Super Coral Glow Banatic Genetics work? Uh, first, let's revisit a couple of the basics just to, as a refresher for those of you that don't know any of this stuff Time to learn. All right If you'd like a full video on how Mendelian genetics work You can click on this card here and watch a video I made uh, several years back I would also recommend learning how a Punnett square works and uh, get familiar with it It can be a lot of fun. It's a good way to visualize how some of this stuff works uh, which by the way I will have little friends with me here to help you guys visualize this whole thing. I'm trying to explain all right all you visual learners out there. Okay, basics. Ball pythons are a diploid species. Basically, most animals, plants, uh, are diploid species, including us. This basically means that our cells have two complete sets of chromosomes that contain the DNA that determine our genetics. Uh, in the case of a female, she will have two X chromosomes, whereas a male will have an X and a Y chromosome. And when a male and female mate, each parent will pass on one of their chromosomes to their offspring. So a female always passes on an X chromosome and the male has a 50-50 chance of either passing on an X or a Y. So it is the chromosome that the father passes on that will determine whether the offspring is male or female. So the thing that makes coral glow banana ball pythons trait uh, different than most other morphs is that it's linked to uh, one of the given sex chromosomes. Uh, just to make this a tad confusing, sometimes the trait can pass over to the opposite chromosome before it's passed on. And this doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. So just keep that in mind. But in this video, we're just going to pretend that it doesn't happen just to make explaining it uh, less confusing, all right? The fact that banana is sex linked is why you have a male maker or female maker snake. Now it's only the males can be female maker or male maker because remember only the male determines the sex of the offspring by passing on either the X or the Y chromosome. For example, all right, this, this is gonna get tough with live snakes that wanna move around but I'm, I'm gonna do my best. All right, for example, let's say you have uh, a male banana ball python and that male is either a male maker or a female maker. What determines this is which of the chromosomes that banana trait happens to reside on. So if the banana is on his Y chromosome, then, and you breed him with a normal female, all of the male offspring in that clutch are going to be bananas because of this. On the other side of that coin, if the banana is on his X chromosome, then all of the female offspring are going to be bananas because of that. Now let's say the female is the one carrying the banana trait and one of her chromosomes uh, has the banana on it and you breed her to a normal male. Now I, I don't recommend that you breed a normal male, but this example is just for science and uh, I believe in science. So the female is going to pass on one of her X chromosomes and the male will pass on her Y. If she passes on the X chromosome with, without the banana, then you will get either a male or female normal, depending on which chromosome the father passes on. 
if she passes on her chromosome with the banana on it, then the offspring will be just like mom, a female banana, or a female maker, male, because the banana is on the X chromosome, so that male will be passing on to make females. You got all that? <laughs> if not, just rewind to this timestamp right here and watch it again and again until you do. For those of you that got it, moving on. Dun da da da! Super banana or coral glow. Super bananas or coral glows uh, can be identified as being a little bit lighter and softer in appearance than regular bananas, and they also don't develop the classic black banana spots or freckles. So, a super banana ball python has the banana gene on both sets of chromosomes, uh, whether it's a male or female. So. It's what's known as homozygous for the banana gene. Homozygous is kind of a fancy word for saying that both chromosomes are the same versus heterozygous, which means they are different. All single gene banana ball pythons are heterozygous for the banana gene. Just like that, see? So the beautiful thing about breeding with a super coral glow or banana is this. If you breed this male here to a normal female, all of the offspring are gonna be banana. the male offspring will be male makers because they will have the banana gene on their Y chromosome. And if this was a female super banana and you bred her to a normal male, again, not recommended, then all of the offspring would again be bananas. Um, and this time, all of the males would be female makers because the banana trait is on the X chromosome this time. All right, I'm gonna put these snakes away because they're, they're making this much more difficult than it already is. All right, now with this information, I think it should be obvious that if you breed two super bananas together, uh, then all of the offspring will be supers as well because they always will pass on a banana trait no matter which chromosomes get passed off. Both parents are homozygous for the trait. Super fires, super lessers, super anything. Also any animals that are visually displaying a recessive trait, such as albino, pied, sunset clown, etc. Uh, the reason being that no matter which of these two chromosomes the parents pass on, the offspring will be getting that trait on both chromosomes. Is it making sense? I really hope so. Let's take a look at the pairing that produced uh, that male super banana 100% head pie that I've got there. Okay, 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 you know what? <laughs> I really wanted to have the snakes on the table to make this even more visually appealing and, and easy for you guys to get, but it's just my brain is not gonna be able to handle trying to wrangle the snakes, explain this, and mess with my little displays, so I apologize, the snakes are going bye-bye. Okay, let's look at the pairing that produced that super coral glow, 100% het pied male that is available. This might get confusing, but I'll, I'll try to keep it simple. We're gonna introduce another gene here, so yes, pied, uh, this should be fun. Dad is a male maker coral glow pied. Since pied is a recessive trait, visual pieds are homozygous, meaning that he is carrying the pied gene on each of his chromosomes. Uh, being a male maker, he also has the coral glow on his Y chromosome. I bred him with uh, Maya back there, who is a single gene uh, coral glow, not a super, not homozygous, so she has the coral glow on only one of her chromosomes, making her heterozygous. So we have the potential for several outcomes. Uh, normal females that are heterozygous for the pied gene. Uh, coral glow females that are also het for pied, uh, male maker bananas that are het for pied, and finally the best odds, which is what we hit with that boy back there, uh, super coral glow male het for pied. Got it? You need me to go over it again? Just rewind that and play it back. <laughs> all right, dude. I, I really hope that you guys understood all that. I hope that it all made sense. I would love to talk with the, this stuff about any of you in more detail. I. One of the fun things about working with ball pythons is that they've got all these different genetics and I think it's one of the only morphs out there that is sex linked in any kind of reptiles. I don't know that for certain. I'm just saying it. But it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I, I, it expands your mind and makes you think and uh, I, I just enjoy doing it and I hope that this was helpful for you guys. Um, I'm not going to lie, my, my brain is a little fried from trying to make that all happen and wrangling the snakes at the same time. Either way, um, yeah. Let's get out of here. You guys be careful up there. 
Remember, if the train's coming, you want to get back because even if you're not right on the track, sometimes the train might kick up a rock or something. So it's not safe to, the train tracks are a dangerous place to be, okay? Oh, first you have to make a video up here. Okay, hey Eli. What? What do you know? Trains. What about trains? That they go on train tracks and sometimes if you see it fall away on the tracks, you say they're going slow, but they're going really fast and that's right now. <laughs> Do you know? I know. Albino rattlesnakes. What about albino rattlesnakes? That they're white and it's not a species. It's just that they're born white. And they're, just because they're white doesn't mean they're not venomous and they still have a rattler on their tail, and that's all I know. Daddy, I'm getting poked in the butt. <laughs> with these little foodies. Ow! Sorry, my guy. Look at those horns. Just wanted to remind you guys the importance of getting outside in the great outdoors. Hopefully you guys uh, take time to do that yourselves today or ha make some time. It's worth it. Find any creatures? Nope. Poop! Yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> Too long. Hey, you told me. <laughs> Good, 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 good. 